Hey everybody, Eric Wagner here with another video. And this week I want to talk a little bit about what's possible with ArcGIS Arcade, a very simple example that we see many times. And that is, let's say you have a parent feature, like a fire hydrant, and a related table that holds multiple inspections for any particular asset, like a fire hydrant. And you want to be able to pull the data from the most recent inspection into the pop-up of the parent feature. Is that possible? The answer is yes. Arcade, as I've already hinted at, is what's going to make that possible. Now, one thing I want to let you know about is maybe you're a little bit nervous because you're not good at Arcade. Well, a secret is I'm not good at Arcade either. You know what I am good at? Copying and pasting. So with a little bit of copying and pasting and some updating of codes, we're going to go ahead and make this workflow possible. So let's go and jump into ArcGIS Online and see how this can be done. So the number one thing to understand here when working with this is to look at what our data is that we're going to be working with. And in this case here, I have a hosted feature layer called Hydrant Inspections. And this layer has that point parent feature for hydrants and a related child table for hydrant inspections. In the event you want to learn how to make this, check out the link down below to the video that walks you through how to build this in ArcGIS Pro and publish it up into ArcGIS Online. So something that we need to keep in mind as we do this workflow is going to be, well, if we want the most recent information about the most recent inspection, well, recency is based upon date. So what is the name of the date field that we're using in our inspection process? So I'm gonna come here into Hydrant Inspections, the table, and click on the Data tab. And the field that's storing the date that people are filling out as they do their work is a field called Inspection Date, capital I, capital D, no space. Spelling is going to be important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, open up Notepad here real quick, and I'm just going to quickly throw that in here because uh, a lot of times when doing uh, coding, whether it's complex or basic, sometimes just taking some notes can be helpful. So inspection date, we'll throw that up there for right now. Now, what arcade expression are we going to use when we do this? Well, again, I am not smart enough to write this, but there are people who are, and I found this really great line of code from this uh, GeoNet post, which is also linked down below in the video description, that we can come in here and we can snag this line of code that comes from maybe about a third of the way down the page. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm just going to paste it into my notepad. Now it's one giant long line of text here, which isn't exactly helpful. So I'm going to scroll back over to the left and anywhere that I see a semicolon, I'm just going to go ahead and press the enter button. And this is just helpful because it makes our code a little bit more uh, readable. And as we're going to see in a little bit, this is going to be helpful for us. Okay, so this is the line of code that we're going to be updating with Arcade. Again, I did not write this, someone else did. But let's go ahead and see now how we can actually use this to pull information from a related table and plop it into the pop-up of the parent feature. So that's going to require a map. And here is that map. What is this map? This map is nothing more than that hosted feature layer we call we saw a couple seconds ago. We've got the points for our fire hydrants, as indicated here under layers, and we have the table for the hydrant inspections. That's all because that's all we need to make this possible. And so if I were to click on any one of these fire hydrants, we can see it tells me it's a fire hydrant and what its asset ID is, just pulling on some basic um, attribution. But we want to get fancy and we want to pull some attributes from the related table. So how do we make that happen? Well, if I've selected layers and I've chosen my layer of interest that has a related table, in this case again, our fire hydrants, I can come over here into configure pop-ups. And you can see this is where I've already made the title say fire hydrant or the text show the asset ID as indicated up here. But if I want to pull on arcade, I have to go into manage expressions. So I'll click on Manage Expressions and choose Add Expression. I'm going to rename this so it's just not the default name of custom code. And we'll just say uh, Recent Inspection Date will be our name. We'll press Save. Anything that's already written in here, I'm just going to highlight and delete. And now this is where we can finally pull in that line of code we were cleaning up a little bit earlier. And we'll walk through how we can work with this. So we'll copy it and, like I said, paste it in. Okay, how does this work? Well, we'll just go kind of line by line to clean this sucker up. So the first thing is we have this variable which just grabs all of the related records for a particular feature. That's all it's doing. So if I click on hydrant ABC, 
it's going to find all of the related records for hyphen ABC. And what is it doing when it grabs all those records? Well, it's ordering them by the date modified, and DES simply means descending. So if we have a whole bunch of dates, because maybe a hydrant's been inspected multiple times, sorting it by descending means that the date up at the very top is the newest. So how can we clean this up to match our data instead of the data that was mentioned in the original GeoNet post? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click after the parentheses for order by. I'm going to uh, click and drag over, and I'm going to go up to this comma and delete everything out. And notice I am leaving my cursor in between that parenthesis and comma. Now, on the right-hand side under globals, I'm going to click on the chevron here for feature, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and here's information about my related records. I'll click on this, and now I'm going to choose feature set by relationship name. And so this is going to pull in the feature set by relationship name appropriate for my hydrant inspection workflow. And if I scroll over to the right, date modified was a really great value for um, their example data, their sample that they were working with. But we know that our inspection date is not called date modified. It's actually called inspection date with a capital I and a capital D. Again, those notes coming in handy. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. And in my line of code, I'm going to delete out date modified and just paste in inspection date. And I'm going to leave that descending there since that's just so critical because again, it sorts all of our dates, leaving the newest one on top. Okay, what next? So we've grabbed all of our related records and we sorted them to put the newest on top. Well, now what it's going to do is it's going to count how many related records are there for any feature that you happen to click on. And if the count is greater than zero, that is to say there's at least one inspection, go through this whole crazy process right here. And what is that crazy process? Well, it's going to grab the first related record value, which since we've already just sorted it descending, that first one is going to be the newest. And then it's going to take that information and store it as related info. Now, I don't care about info project phase with this plus sign here and this first space. So I'm going to delete that. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to come in here and there's that date modified variable again. I don't care about date modified. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete out date modified. And again, I'm going to paste in inspection date. So the computer is going through, looking at all the related records for any particular feature, sorting them to put the newest one on top, and then grabbing whichever one it sees first and displaying it as text. So I'll click test. And we'll see, there it is. It's grabbing, in this case, some sample data that I have from somewhere in this crazy data set of mine that I'm working with, um, a most recent inspection date of February 19th, 2021. Now here's the thing, it has uh, a space here and a parenthesis and a parenthesis at the end. Well, where is that coming from? It's actually coming from this here. So what we're saying is add in a space and an open parenthesis, then add, with the plus sign, whatever that most recent inspection date is, formatted month, month, day, day, year. And then at the very end, add on a closing parentheses. So in the event you don't want this closing parentheses, well, we can simply delete out the plus sign and the quotation marks that hold that parentheses. And we can do the same thing at the very beginning. So I'll highlight all of this and we'll just leave it as the text to local info inspection date with the formatting. I'll click test and now we'll see that we just have the date. So just like that, we've gone through and we've cleaned it up. I'll press OK. All we've done though is written the expression. We haven't actually applied this expression to the pop-up itself. As you can see, it still just says asset ID. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of remember in the back of my mind, this is called recent inspection date expression slash expression zero. I'll click back. And now down here at the bottom for my pop-up, I can come back in here where it says asset ID and maybe I'll type in something like uh, last inspection date, colon, and space, make it fancy. I'll even make this bold. And now if I want to add this value in, I'll open up a curly Q bracket, and I'll start typing in uh, expression. And there it is, the expression slash express zero, recent inspection date. I'm going to unbold this and press OK. And now we can see that it's point in that last inspection date for this particular feature. 
So now if I click on this fire hydrant, I can see, oh, that's, you know, fire hydrant 1297, last inspected on February 26th. Or this one is fire hydrant 743, last inspected on February 23rd, 2021. So as you can see, it's possible that we can pull attribution over from a related table into a parent feature to have it appear in the pop-up. Now we just pulled over the date value. If there's any other attributes that you wanted to pull over, maybe we also wanted to pull over uh, who the inspector was, what the pressure was, or any other attributes, we can certainly do that as well. And of course, don't forget that this isn't just something we do with a fire hydrant workflow. You can do this with any type of related tables you might have. Maybe it's uh, storm drain inspections, valve inspections, manhole inspections, etc. So this was meant to be a quick video that took a look at how we can use some code that other people have written for Arcade to pull values from a related table, put them into the parent features pop-up, and do so actually pretty easily, as long as you first understand the data that powers your relationship class. So as always, thanks for watching.